Okay, that'll do for now, right? Yeah, I think uh, if we get lateral one direction or the other as fast as you are comfortable with, that'd be awesome. Roger. And this is, uh, you can see in uh, the two stereo fish eyes maybe back off by about a half a meter and it'll be just gold. Roger. If I go too fast, I'll stir it up. So, you know, that's yeah. the trade off there, right? Kirk leaves it like you're, you know, driving down your pickup truck down a country road at 90 miles an hour. You can see the dust cloud for 10 miles. Now look at the upper lap view, just barely there. You get the. Yeah, a vision of what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm right under Atalanta. Did you capture that, Atalanta? Yeah. Currently, absolutely minus second, and then micro second. Yeah, that's great. Bridge so nav, 10 meters, 270. Oh, cool. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> like, I thought we had a little more swing left, but I guess we don't. Larry, somebody's commenting yeah. in about uh, Northern Ireland, the Giants Causeway, and also Fengal's Cave that like you were talking about before. Too hot. Yeah. So they, uh, they're commenting about the story that you were telling us before, oh. they, that it looks just like Fengal's Cave in Scotland and no, the so Giant's can, uh, Causeway. Bring and, your head to the left. That, yeah, and that, and that, the story was connecting those two, Fengal's yeah. Cave and, and the Giant's Causeway. Hey, Dan, maybe back off by another half meter. Roger. That's about uh, five meters away just for your information. Oh, five meters. All right. Yeah, light years away. We're getting really good light. Yeah, that, uh, uh, that, that that's quite remarkable. Spectacular, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we should come in uh, according to our snail trail here, where we started it, where it was all swoopy. Uh, no, you, you can uh, continue looking to your left and then tilt up. I'm just going to run out what we got on the tether here. And then we'll decide if we want to. Move the ship or not? Is there any zoom on the Atlant camera? No. <laughs> I'm using that. Sorry. Yep. You zoom okay. in, it's useless for me. All you right. can uh, tilt yep. up a bit. There. That, that's yep, a that's really good. nice. That's it. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, Chris. Uh, you want to move you towards Hercules? All right. Where you plan to keep going north, then? Yeah. Is that right? You guys want to keep yeah. following yep, yep, the star? Yep, All right. Yeah. Bridge nav, two zero meters, zero one five. Uh, while we're doing that, we can do a cake layer if you want, Jonathan. Yeah, let's do it. I'll take it. Roger. How about there? Yep, that's good. Here we go. What's your uh, what's your height off C4? Uh, It's really slopey there, so uh, the DVL is pinging 17 meters, but you know that's not right. Okay. Yeah, I'm still I'm taking a photo for this every once every three seconds with all three cameras. Roger. So uh, you, depending on what that tether does, you may have to come back up a little bit as I come. To the south here. Might be okay. Well, we got a question. Is your data processing intern there right now? As I, I understand Jonathan's processing right now as we go, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we will reach the goal um, after, you know, when, whenever you're dealing with uh, data at this data rate, um, it, it re the more important thing than processing power or anything like that is, is the actual procedure that you use to handle that data. So that's our focus right now with um, the interns okay, can, and uh, everyone else that's uh, assisting behind look the scenes the right. looking at this uh, data up, is, right is right not up. focusing on just chewing through all the data as fast as possible, <laughs> but thoroughly documenting what we're left doing hand mouse action so going. that um, not only can the data interns actually go through and start processing the data, but more importantly, we can automate it. Um, and, and you're only going to know that, that right by there. 
by doing things like and she's uh, got Taylor Ann's our, our, over there our science lead and right now and, heading. and when we say something like, oh, wow, we're five meters off, that, that really matters That's as good far yep. as uh, right. establishing the parameters for automating this in the so, future. So, yeah, basically AUV at the moment you're trying to keep me in the view. An autonomous so you, you've underwater got vehicle. the controls down enough to... What would be the ideal standoff given this amount of light that we're dumping yeah, out? Roger. Um, and then we can automate everything. Yeah, it's been It'll an be hour of me telling you every little thing to do, so I'm going to stop doing that now and let you, because let you work it out for yourself. Yeah, that that's what all this is about. Really okay, here we go. I'm going to come uh, the do the same thing again as fast as I can uh, back to the north. And Jonathan, and just for note purposes, I know we turned to, um, the mids off and then back on. So correct? they like to see so you closer to Hercules. Okay, perfect. Yeah, that's what I noted. I just want to make sure. Thank you. Uh, where I start getting nervous is when the tether is going to start to uh, get too close to itself, where it goes up and comes back down again. Oh, uh, one of my students or locked in. Or it's hitting Atlanta. Hi, Samantha. Other than that, you can, you know, if we hit Atlanta with her, my we're day too close. is going great. I'm having lots of fun. I uh, hope yeah, you're the closer the better. Having a but good day too. They I also hope you guys are behaving see. with the So substitute. what I'm looking for is what terrain is coming up. So, uh, and like in this case, you can look to the left and down a little, and I'll see, you know, if there's a big rock coming. Not too concerned this time because we've already been there once, so it's a familiar neighborhood. Still new, but familiar. I'm doing a third pass back to the north, up high, and uh, we should get some new terrain. I don't know if you want to uh, turn and go along it. Uh, with an orbit for for an orbit sweep. That I'm happy to do it, but I that's maybe more of a Jonathan question. What what direction would we turn? Uh, we'd probably turn to turn to the no, yeah turn port. to the right. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, the the port side is is the better orbiting side. Let's. Uh, I, I completely agree. If you want, if you have the time to do a quick sweep, so we get really nice orbit data. Yeah, we do. That that would be really really nice. To be able yeah. To do. Let's roll it. Isn't that the goal to match the uh, photogrammetry with the orbit? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yep. And this is a fantastic feature to to try that on. Uh -huh. I'm going a little bit further north than we have now. I'm uh, 10 meters further north than we have, so I'm going to turn and do the Norbit run now, if we're happy with that. Roger. Here we go. Okay, wait, uh, yeah, give me a second to pull it up so I can uh, make sure that we're getting what we need. Roger, keep, I'll keep, just keep, go keep, a little further. Keep going. Down. Yeah, keep going as far, <laughs> yeah, get it as far as you can. And and also you're gonna need to come up and step off. Roger. So I have the view set up sort of the way you wanna go. Yeah. You're right there, so we wanna be kinda up and over. Yeah. This in this is, clear uh, zone. This is where we came in, where it was all laying over, right. all swoopy. Yeah. Which I thought was really cool, and then we had to run away. Chris, I think we should totally uh, take that leftmost bottle and point it in the same direction as Norbit so we can do this and kind of lockstep, turn it all the way to the port. Oh, yeah, sure. That's a good That's a good idea. I'm, I'm well over camera right now looking forward. Yeah. Because the reality is I could easily use this Herc Zeus data that's coming out. It's, it's virtually identical to CinemaCam. Yeah, right. Yeah, but, yeah, but don't forget about lights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ain't got no lights out there, man. ROV can, I mean, we can, can figure out We lights. can reorient Norbit, too, to forward-looking. Yeah, that would be more better. Uh, okay. We're just going to be um, more limited in normal surveys at that point. End of my leash here. Where All right. We'll, we'll add that to the notes to discuss is how to better harmonize Norbit. For yeah. anyone that's... Orbit on a tilt, that's what we need. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you, 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 need, you need to be able to yeah, steer it. It didn't go great yeah, the first time. What you can do. Okay, this is going to be a uh, not much fun for you guys, but we'll watch the uh, Minecraft screen there. Yeah, and yeah. in uh, Triclops's screen, you can actually see in the top right-hand corner Am that is actually at No, you got to come higher. Higher. Higher approaching. and... Uh, away. In that fish-eye view. Yeah. 
For those of you just joining us, we are looking for an I mean, act. Uh, come down, uh, come down a few Kilometer meters. basalt. Don't come up. I'm probably at um, the end of my leash pulling on you there. So this is volcanic rock that uh, no, basically is uh, kind of <laughs> cools and I'm that the you. cooling process causes it to so fracture in a hexagonal pattern. Uh, all right, so we got Norbit all. Somebody's writing in that all tilted. They, all right, there you go. There now you got a good view on it. The this is perfect. Yeah, this is perfect. I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna try and uh, offset this line down to the south then. Yeah. Right there. Really uh, cool view with that Triclops right now, showing uh, Atalanta and the I mean hanging cable. Altitude. Uh, yeah, the altitude looks great. I'm just gonna hold the depth. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. I'm right. going to stop recording. And uh, what kind of range are you running on, Chris? You're going well, to have to come Sorry, up Sorry, i got a couple things going on. I'm taking a note of the time that this started, so I don't have to dig it out of the logs. It can come up a little faster. Uh, I've, I've stopped taking imagery. We're too far from the wall, so I, I stopped our transect. Am I still coming up? Oh yeah, we're getting, and we actually have DVL, which is kind of amazing. Yeah, All I'm right. up. I can come back down a little. No, no, right this is no, this is great. Right Thirty-five meters. No, this is perfect. Okay. Uh, hold on, I'm wrapped around the axle here. Hold what you got there and look to the right just a bit for me. Yeah, hold what you got. In a minute. Uh oh. Yeah, I'll stop. Okay, as for those uh, watching in, what we're doing now is we step back away from the wall um, so you can't see much in the cameras, but <laughs> this is to allow the multi-beam sonar, very high resolution sonar that's mounted on Hercules to, to image the right wall. A and the idea will be eventually right. um, to take that sonar imagery, which gives a three-dimensional depth picture. It's basically just measuring the range <laughs> From Hercules to the to the wall, and presenting a three-dimensional picture in that range context, and to take Jonathan's very very high resolution imagery, which we've just collected. You're just going to back up to the end and of your leash. Our that. So we have a really uh, okay, high high you. resolution picture of what things look like. Yeah, I am. Is that the yep. is that the idea? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, hit the hit the nail on the head. It's. Uh, if you are using a Did drone or many of these aerial surveys or applications of photogrammetry on land, um, you could go out there with a laser scanner, a you could go a out light, there with a LIDAR. LIDAR yeah. yep. that's, that's how all these autonomous cars are seeing the world is right. through LIDAR, <laughs> which is... Nobody caught it. <laughs> very similar to... Um, very similar to the Norbit. It's, okay, it, it, uh, prevents, it provides a, up, a kind of point uh, view of the entire world and they're very accurate points. Do you see what happened there? And we, no, can't, we <laughs> can't use LIDAR here to do that because light doesn't travel that far. <laughs> in, in, we could if we were very, very close really to it. Really close. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and in theory, we could take your camera my system over my head and combine that with a laser ranging top. system. That's fine. Oh, I think I'm seeing Atalanta and Norbit. No, what am I seeing over there? That's probably not. Um, oh, it's just noise. It's common a technology the, right now. Not, not yet. As, I as the, the sonar way. systems are, uh, which will give us a, we can stand off much further and, and see that. And ultimately, combining the two data sets allows a much greater degree of accuracy and precision um, okay. between the two different uh, uh, data types. So. Off and the, the challenge will be yeah, that they're, they're navigated independently, but yep. we have enough hope. Uh, in our enough faith in our navigation systems that we can uh, we call co-register, we can actually. And there's so two ways I'm to really do that. Right One is here. we believe the, we lose the DVL? No, positioning. No, we didn't lose right it. away and okay. do the geometric calculations of where everything is, and that's where we start. Yep. Right. And okay. the other way we do it is that we can uh, actually ready, see features Chris? both on the sonar. Yes. And in the imagery. Yeah, and, wait, wait, and you got to get lined up with can the clip. Force them yeah. to match up because oh, you know that sorry. that hole is so that hole. So there's your view. Yeah, snap them together. And snap them together. Oh, you yeah. got it over here. Yeah. A little oh, more to the far. right. Yeah, yeah. sorry. Uh, yeah, the later. update rate is like 10 hertz or something, so it's... Yeah. Jonathan, we have I a question for you. I do know uh, that. What's the maximum frame rate of the new 6K right, camera? Go. Oh. 
Uh, fellow camera nerd, I love it. It runs you know, away. <laughs> so sorry, that's maximum, a bug. You got to hit. Uh, see the tilt power right here. The maximum frame rate's uh, 60 off. frames per second at 6K. And if so you bump it, it down to 4K, it's 120. It back on and then, uh, but the real feature of the camera system is the sensitivity uh, of the maybe, sensor. It's yeah. not the total frame rate per second, right, but it's a, a nice low light camera. It really has a, the capacity to not require as much light um, pouring into the water column as, as would normal. We can see better in the darkness. No, it happens all the time. And Larry, this one, you could probably uh, talk more to this one. We have a four-year-old from Ontario watching who wants to know more about how the basalt structures form. Oh boy, oh boy a four-year-old, that's, that's yeah. phenomenal. That's, that's <laughs> wonderful, what a question from a four-year-old. Okay. Um, well, okay. if we can you think going. about a volcano, a volcano is this hot, molten okay, is rock. That as lava we under you, uh, you can keep a view and on as me. it you have to comes come to the surface a bit. either underwater or in the air it cools down and if there are kind of special circumstances that allow it to cool very slowly in certain ways the lava will cool in a way that it shrinks as things do they shrink when they get cool and it'll start cracking at the surface yeah, we're and and those cracks will propagate down we're going, I as far as, as fast here. as I want. In right? Canada, I can say 10, yeah. 20, 30, 40 meters uh, sometimes. Uh, yeah. And well, form reasonable. these little columns. As long as you can keep but it But it takes stable. a very special yeah. circumstance. It doesn't happen every time there's a volcano and lava. That's all right. Are it, they typically the same diameter, or, so. or do they vary? No, do they, they, they vary here. quite a bit. And we've seen we've seen them here to large and small. And all that that all depends on the... The, the, how uh, video. viscous, how thick the lava is, the chemistry of the lava, and how fast or gotcha. slow they cool, and whether the cooling process has lots of seawater flowing through it or little. Yeah, that'll do. For oh yeah, now. we still got lots more. Uh... Do you have enough film, Jonathan? Yeah, I stopped. I stopped. <laughs> I stopped recording. I can't create a 3D model of blue. Oh, but there's, there's. You're drifting off a little bit there, Dan. Uh, back to my left. Yeah, but um, yeah, what viewers can Just see nice right now in back. Sat Feed Three uh, is that live view from Norbit. It, Larry, what does Norbit stand for? You know, that's a very good it question. Yeah, no, I, don't I don't think, think it, stands it stands for anything. anything. That's yeah. just the name. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I, well, we honor. Uh, Dr. Norbit yeah. out there <laughs> somewhere. Well, the, the well, we can we can cut we can kind of guess. Uh, Nor Norbit is a Norwegian company, so I wonder if the N O comes from uh, Norway or N O R maybe. Norwegian. Radar. All right, this is a good distance. Okay, I'm trying. No, no, I would say N O R Norwegian. Can you zoom bathymetry. in? A couple clicks Ooh. on the name screen there. Oh yeah. I don't know. So I got if, that. If that's not the name, they've, they they've, they've, they've that. never claimed that it stands for anything. <laughs> that's, so. that's good. Norbit. It's easy to say. Yeah, that DVL is way off. For those watching uh, on <laughs> channel one nice. or two, That's we have Norbit fed down dots. channel three right now. Couldn't quite hear you. Uh, yeah. You were yeah, really is quiet. I, what is? I don't it's know who like who is. This is set to USB. A voice I, that came out of the uh, out it of the is, ether. But it's <laughs> but it's not it's, doing it's that. It's hard when we're in mass. I'm gonna research it. <laughs> The mystery. Oh. Yeah, there you go. What? I don't know what the deal is. Was it Manel? I but I set the position source as USB uh, L, I and think it, it was Pete, but he was just saying that um, for those who are watching, yeah, because we keep watching, losing it on these uh, rocks. Channels one or two, we have Norbit in channel three. Yeah, yeah. that's right. The Norbit is in the lower left screen. I, th I well, I, I think that'll be in that position. It's feed three, so. So it's all the it's all the green and yellow and orange dots, and those dots each represent. Hopefully, we're sending uh, that out. A range the, uh, from the Hercules satellite to the wall. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's very cool to watch. Yeah, and it and eventually creates this this nice map. Yeah. So the final map will actually be quite a lot better than this. Oh yeah. The uh, the voxels that you're seeing there are a way to downsample the data, so we can keep a lot of it in memory. Uh, if we try to keep every point and display every point, it turns into a disaster and fills up fills up all the RAM on the computer. So we downsample them into into larger voxels. Um, 
That's, that's me racing. What is a voxel? It, it's a three-dimensional pixel. So if you have, like, if you imagine a pixel in a in an image, a we, voxel uh, is a pixel with some depth to it. So far enough to the south. So there. instead of a instead of a square, it becomes a cube. Yeah. You uh -huh. want to move the ship south a little? Uh, no, is that far enough for the model? Or uh, that I I believe so. We haven't Just been we haven't been this far, so we no. went we overshot okay. what we did. All right, so twenty three twenty one. So currently we are at a depth of uh, 1,700 meters about. Fine. Yeah, it wouldn't hurt. Okay, we're going to do the same thing, but in reverse. Ah, but it wonks. It hurt, doesn't like to fly Water backwards. temperature is 2.72 degrees slower. Celsius. Why are your heading coming off there? Do we have an updated uh, off-bottom time? Have we extended this dive at all, or...? Good question. <laughs> I think the we we had a scheduled uh, finish time, but I think we're we're holding the option of extending if the weather if the weather holds up. So. Uh, I know Jason is sitting in the lounge, and I'm sure he is sitting there studying the weather, the winds and the waves at every moment, and will let us know when he thinks uh, it's time. Your but turn is as long as we're having, yeah, we're having good backwards. results, we'll, we'll keep it goes going. Wonky, I don't know. Yeah, I'm glad the weather is turning out to be yeah, better than expected. To, that, that's always a nice surprise. That's going to really jack your data. I'm going to adjust yeah, my Yeah, well, this next one is, I mean, the forward one was the, the good one. This is just a few extra points. So Chris, you're going to come back to it again in the reverse direction, and then we'll. Yeah, that's we'll, the plan. Great. Okay. We got to get back in the position under Atalanta anyway, so. Right. Okay. We that's may as good. well. Yep. Uh, so we have a question of when we when did we start our travel across the ocean? So we're actually <laughs> the, sticking around the, blades the Hawaiian Islands uh, pretty forward, closely. We're so just north of uh, like Molokai Island right now, and uh, depending on weather, that's, that's going to determine how long we stay here. Archer looking at these really cool basalt rocks. And then um, next we transit closer to the big island. Uh, and we took off, it feels like a long time ago. Was it yesterday that we left? <laughs> yes. <Yesterday. laughs> I, I think it was yesterday, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> that we left Honolulu. Um, yeah. well, so, some of us have been on board since the leg before, so. Yeah. <laughs> Um, someone says, love, love uh, seeing this new technology. Was yeah, it okay. just, was the question about just this trip or? Yeah, there, the question was, when did you start your travel across the ocean? Across but, the yeah. ocean. Okay, yeah. well, if, if, we, <laughs> if we look back at the history of the Nautilus, it really started its activities, I think, in about 2008. And that started in the Black Sea. And then it moved into the Mediterranean for quite a few years and then finally came across the Atlantic. That's when I was on it. Into the Gulf yeah, of Mexico. Uh -huh. And then finally into the Pacific. And okay, then in the Pacific. Coming yeah, down. a friend of mine was on the expedition when they crossed the Panama Canal, I'm which was really cool. 20 meters away from me yeah. now, right. interior, this so you got to come down. So. This should be good. And now we're in the Pacific. And yep. over the next few years, we'll be moving further Long. west. Oh. Uh, if you look. Um, Tilt that the end of next so season, we'll end up in uh, American Samoa. Get used to yeah, I heard that. about that during our training. And then so the, the year after that, probably in Guam. Meter, uh, wow. Resolution, and 10 then meter range. So I am 20 meters almost north of you. Onwards. Onward, yep. And so downward. Caveat with that screen. Uh, uh, looks like I a long time PBL viewer walk. saying, uh, love um, seeing this new technology at work. Been following right these here, expeditions for a couple of years, and it's exciting to have new views. But I love the creatures too. We love the creatures as well. But rocks are also super cool. Thank Remember you. Yeah. For the blue dots. No, there's the a, there's a the slight prejudice on this leg. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so many of the legs that focus means, uh, just on the creatures. And, and, yeah. We probably and, and we, we want to get a, which we a broader spectrum on this leg. Like. Where the creatures live, their yeah. terrain, yeah. be okay. able to explore yeah, that. Yeah, you come down, I'll start coming down. Let's okay. see if we can yes, hit the cliff. Although we still do pause for creatures. Why don't you, how's our tether turns? Uh, you can 
All right, so we want to keep going up the slope, or do we want to go along this edge, or what's the plan? I don't know what the plan is. So I think I think we want to. We still have a, a waypoint in in our we do. horizon. I think we want to if we can continue Start towards that. that. Yeah, we can head. Um, and I don't know if, if that takes us along a wall. That's great. It, yeah, it kind of does. Yeah. So, so, so let, let kind of a long end let's up. try to get the best of both worlds and. and so you can. Uh, if you're going to do that. Why don't you hold what you mute. got there for a second? Yeah. The uh, mute switches. I'll right get there. back underneath you here. It's. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Okay. And keep so the down. bearing is. Uh, Yep. 155, Dan. Roger, let us uh, get back in the box here. We're yep. Hi, Ethan from Newfoundland. You can come down a little faster. Ethan is seven. 20 meters a minute. Uh, do we expect to see any sea creatures at this depth? We oh. already have. We've seen a few. Yeah, we, we, um, we've seen all kinds of. Did you change your head? But we never know when the next one's coming. You can uh, make your head. Yeah, we haven't east. seen any large kind of things that Ethan may be thinking about, but uh, you never know. They, they, they're, they're down here. Yeah, we've seen some s uh, different types of eel-like fish and um, some different species yeah, of corals and sponges. Or, uh, oh, no, keep coming Some anemones. Down, or maybe I come some up. Some sea up stars. There's, there's definitely a lot. There's a fish me. right there. Uh, can't tell what type from this distance. And another one, maybe a house yeah, I can or hold that for a second. probably... Just an, another eel-like fish, though. Back on the good stuff here. <laughs> and now we've returned. I know Jonathan's okay, going to get mad at me. We're back in. Uh, I was going to say, who highlighted all these rocks? <laughs> <laughs> it was Ale. I know it was Ale highlighted all those rocks. <laughs> Look at that, boy. <laughs> it's beautiful. So, uh, sorry, what was it again? One two zero. No, uh, 155. 155 is the bearing. Yeah. I just wanted to, I thought this was really interesting that they were all like laying at an angle here. Yep, yep. Like they're bent. Mm -hmm. How's that happen? Well, when they're hot, they can do a lot of things. There's a lot of, when a volcano's <laughs> going off and lava is flowing, it's got a lot of, a lot of pressure in different directions. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a place we've been before. Uh, this is why we came in and yeah. uh, yep. ran away. Yep. So uh, I got to get to the south of Atalanta there, do I? Yeah. Okay, Ray, I'm going to... Very cool, Jonathan. I'm going to come to the south of Munich. Well, that's just the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Wall, so. so this, uh, um, for our viewers, this is uh, basically the first renderings, or...? Yeah, so... Is that, is that up on a... Oh, yeah, there, yeah you're, you're yeah, up on, on the, the feed. Yeah, yeah, there you go. So this uh, just ran that... Uh, I think okay. you're muted, Jonathan. Yeah, Jonathan, you need to be on SPL. Or Jonathan. Thanks. Yeah, so I just ran the model from the uh, the ridge that we were just on. And uh, if you'll recall, we had asked, uh, when Dan reached the end, he said, hey, should I, when I come back, should I uh, add another layer to the cake? And that's what he did. Each one of these white, uh, uh, one of these, each one of these white boxes okay, guys, is actually can, uh, a picture. Your boots. Right. And that picture, as I click a white box, now, uh, three zero is the photo of one the, five uh, five. Is the photo that helped triangulate that feature? So you'll actually go through, and each one of these images is kind of the track of the ROV. That's going to take us up. This is where Dan said, "Oh, okay, yeah. I'm going to layer the cake. I'm going to add a layer oh, to this boat." So up. we increased in altitude. Do you use altitude in the ocean? Yeah, All sure. Right. Yeah, there you go. 
increased in altitude and then the okay, right. uh, ROV up. traversed I mean, you laterally come up too. to the starboard. And then we came up and then he started going the opposite direction, I believe, to, to fill in for Norbit. So all of those individual points, this is what we mean about photogrammetry. It's the relative angular change between these individual images that help kind of construct this 3D-ness for the actual features. This is where we came in. We were like, oh, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> <laughs> cool. climb that wall. How many images did you use to generate <laughs> that specific one? Uh, this was 411 yeah, you can stay 20 images meters above me out now. of some 10,000. Okay. Or 15, something like yeah, that. Yeah, it's looking awesome so far. It's looking pretty good. I'm very happy with that. Yeah. And come up faster. 35 is your speed limit. When it when it gets yellow, you're going too fast. Yeah. yeah this is the way it should be. I'll come back down yeah. a little. I'm, uh, we're this off at the top any there, so I'm good. Processing really, right? This is just raw images dumped in, which is honestly all you should need. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's uh, good for now. Pretty, pretty cool. coherent looking. Pretty cool. I mean, and then, oh, I'm sorry. This is also just one camera. I actually only dumped in the port yeah. fisheye camera. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you taking us along three. the wall, Chris, or are you taking us to the waypoint? So you can going to the waypoint. That's really cool. Right we should go so along the wall like to the waypoint. There's no image. Yeah, if, if we could go along to the w wall yeah, to the waypoint, that, that would be that would be uh, the we'll best. Be I think that's certainly the most interesting. Best. We can do and that. And I think Jonathan's got some real good stuff in his pocket already, so I think we're all feeling more comfortable there. Might as well keep it interesting on the way there. Totally. <laughs> yeah, totally. I'm happy. Very cool. Note that in the log. Jonathan's happy. For now. <laughs> For now. For now. <laughs> <A> caveat. <laughs> Can we find something better now, please? Bridge half. Can we do a... What better than this? I don't know, but south. we'll find it. It's the spirit of exploration. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. I like that. So, Jonathan, uh, I suppose there were a bunch of fish in the scene. Uh, how, how would the processing actually handle that? Would it kind of paint them into the wall? Or would it still show them coming off it? Fish... Fish would not be good for photogrammetry. So I actually just activated what's called the tie points view in the right hand side of the screen. So photogrammetry, this application is used, it looks for high contrast points, but it assumes those points don't actually move relative to the rest of the picture. So if you had a high contrast point that was a fish and it was moving, these tie points, these individual elements that Reality Capture used to uh, calibrate with this image over here, those are the same high resolution or same high contrast point that it's looked at between the two different images. Uh, and if that was a fish and it was also moving, it would just destroy everything, and 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 you would you would not achieve alignment. So I love though I love fish. We all love fish. Everyone here loves fish. Um, photogrammetry does does not like fish. Yeah. What about uh, some like variable shadows uh, based on the lighting that you're using? Does that affect it as well? Reach nav, let's set the bearing to It does, to and that's what makes zero, underwater zero. stuff so hard. Like, that's um, a good uh, standoff there. With us. Okay. So, so um, anyone that's um, on the surface, right set bearing two, zero, zero. Zero. you have the sun, and the sun doesn't move, or you have a light inside of a house or something like that, and that light doesn't move. Because if you that's walk around uh, your backyard at night with a flashlight, your shadows are changing. So if you imagine that the high contrast points that that reality capture or any mm. photogrammetry capture is using to... Oh, look at that. It rendered. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're, it'll texture it next. Nice. Um, it changes, and therefore uh, it, it's very difficult to do that. That's an advantage of an ROV right now, actually. So we have so much light on the front that uh, we're canceling uh, those shadows it's out. It's so very nice to light. just be able to say... Um, Taylor Ann, you could probably the answer this. Do waypoint. any animals live here? If so, what kinds of animals? And not have animals? to try and work it out. Yeah. yeah. We see a lot of different uh, <laughs> that's families that, that's that pretty are spectacular for just here. a few minutes. Yeah. Um, here you see an anemone-type organism uh, and then also a bottle brush that coral that out? just went off the screen. Um, it's done, you see so it'll, shrimp. It'll do he does want to publish it, yeah. And that's without the texture. Uh, right? Potentially yeah, sometimes sharks. Wow. Uh, wow. Yeah, you can view. So that's, so that's, just, that's just the platelets, you know, yep. just Anytime pulling in the platelets. Any type of organisms you would expect yeah. to yep. see uh, in shallow water, but they're completely different species. Awesome. So we'll see 
you know, sea so cucumbers I'm here and now. sea stars. Yeah. That's oh, because, uh, uh, um, they just look very different from our their over, but shallow water. We don't have any Doppler uh, beams because I'm up on the top of the hill. So here is I'm a, yeah, another coral coming out, on right. the screen. I'm going to have to ask Rennie what the deal is, why it's not um, letting me select USBL sponges. as the... It's a lot of variation of light. Yeah. And a lot of people yes, wouldn't, please. you know, wouldn't think so because yeah. it's such yeah. an extreme environment to live in. Yeah. yeah. So and I mean, it wasn't that no far long ago that lock. people thought nothing the was down icon. here. So yeah. um, and so and a lot of kids, like speaking no as a teacher, can, a lot of kids think that the bottom of the, of the ocean is flat. Yeah. And it's not. It's uh, there are a lot of mountains underneath. Yeah. And what's super cool about what the is happening here, um, what Jonathan is doing is that we can see behind it, too. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> <laughs> you guys want to see what's behind kilometer basalt? <laughs> um, do you think that your work will ever allow us viewers to visit these locations ourselves via virtual reality tech? Oh, that's abso the absolutely, that's the absolutely. Yeah. That's, that's where we're going. Gosh, I hope yeah. so. How come with that be, guys? Mm -hmm. um, somebody asked, so how do you do uh, photogrammetry when there are fish around? Yeah. Shoo, I shoo don't away. think that <laughs> that's a nut that's been cracked yet. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure there's other people out there that have examined that thoroughly. I think that you could... I don't know. So if, if, fish, if fish moved out of the frame fast enough, you can actually set up your parameters such that it would ignore can, uh, X number of outliers. Come up. So if fish are moving up, fast yeah. out of the frame, yeah, that'd be I'll fine. Move, but like I'll yesterday, good. I was frustrated because we dove down, and although there was a lot a of biodiversity in the water, all that marine snow and that. krill, the reality in was it wasn't really door. good for what I wanted to do, which was do photogrammetry, because that was just a bunch of high contrast points that were moving in and around the area. So there you go. That's the three-dimensional view. And I can do some cleanup here. Let me just turn off my uh, alignment hammers off and then do one section. Someone's asking about our, our dots, our lasers, the green ones, and how come we don't have them turned on? No, like the fish, they ruin yeah. everything. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think that Fish. there's a great there's a great debate about how useful they are, um, and the, the other side of it is Sorry, we o this. we only have one of them working. So. Oh. Right. Yeah, but but the, I I think there's there's often a debate about how useful they are. And so, um, I think ma many people are more comfortable having them off in general. What's the largest area that you've scanned? I think um, you're looking at it. Yeah, the, the, well, but this is this is brand new technology. We're just yep. starting out with the first it. First time, right? Yeah. Now. Yeah. So, so here it is in feed three. Yeah. So, and again, just for anyone, I'm I'm obliged to say this is literally done just now. Uh, there's a lot of model optimization. This is only one out of three cameras, and this was only 400 of some 10,000 images taken so far. But that, that was three one. Zero zero that meters. Was one. But that was all done in in a few minutes. Uh, yeah, three in zero terms meters. Of processing. That's one very nine zero. And that's and that's with a desktop class computer just sitting here in the rack room. Um, and and what you can see even from this is that certainly the the co-registration is. is, is you know, it's on. Quite, I mean, those, nice. those columns look like columns. Yeah. You know, there's, there's yep. no there, was no. there was no confusion. There really were right. these striations right. in the actual column. Yeah. I mean, it, so. looks, it looks just like it, we saw yeah. it as it was coming in in real time. That's, yeah. that's pretty nice. So, again, we'll, we'll have to go through. There's many, many more cameras to add. But this is that also the value of that coordination that Dan did when he reached the end. You'll remember we first came in here below when at this very, very high structured area down at the base of the cliff, he went back up. And then that is where it filled in all of this information here what, on the top. What is that, Tracy? Pretty so interesting. there we're seeing a fly trap anemone. So uh, oh, that's a fly trap anemone. that whip. could be done to this yeah. is, of course, Another increasing type of anemone. the contrast. Yeah. Oh, okay, I should recognize that by now. It's the second one I've seen. This one's closed shut, um, that's why. It looks different. Processing. Absolutely mm -hmm. geeking out. What do fly yes. trap and then very cool? <laughs> yeah. No. And I'll say, you know, I'm not a I'm not a scientist. I'm not a geologist. Um, 
but the other fun thing about this technology and the, the, the feedback I would love to get out of geologists or scientists using these data is when I look at this as a model, it's, 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 it is compressing time in a unique way. This survey took us an hour to do, and, and were, you, were you interested in the geology of this, it would take you an hour to review it from the start of the video to the stop of the video. This 3D technology virtualizing your capacity to see the world as a geologist, you could say, well, man, you know what? I'm really interested in this area over here. You can instantly synthesize an entire hour's dive in a single manipulatable model. What do you get to fast feedback? Fast feedback and... Um, but you can't speed it up the time it takes to collect it yet. <laughs> no, not yet. <laughs> no, 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 but, no, that's, but that's, that's something to aspire to, too. I mean, the, that, yeah, that, that, that we... It would, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well. Uh. Truly, yeah. So, I'm very happy. So what we'll do for the rest of our data processing team once we're once we're off of this this dive is start processing all of the information that we got tonight and uh, seeing seeing what we can do with it. I do have a team member ashore that has spooled up Unreal Engine, some of the background, um, and Unreal Engine is going to be the tool that we'll use to create virtual reality worlds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, so there'll be there'll be a lot more to come. But just as a first start, demonstrating we could collect an hours of footage and then process this in about maybe ten minutes. It took. Ten minutes. What? Um, great success from this end. We can always automate things. Can you measure? Uh, that's 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 a tool for him. Oh, fantastic! So so so, Doctor Doctor Ballard here is sitting behind, and he just asks, "Can we measure this?" The answer right now is no, because what we didn't do is collect Did any you? reliable data because we didn't have the lasers on. Some so, someone had uh, there. So, so, so you don't have a fiducial for yeah for, the fiducial the any but core element that once, says. Once once you get the multibeam data and co-register with the multibeam data. Then, then you'll have all the, the yeah, true geospatial. Yeah, the multi-beam data, we know how how far is one point mm -hmm. to another point. Now, is there an XYZ for these in geographic space, or is this just in relative space right now? So, Chris Krasnovsky. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> what Larry just asked was uh, uh, whether or not Get there is like, you know, an XYZ uh, knowledge of, of the georeferencing, like where each one of these pictures was taken. and. Currently, the answer is no. These are just pictures. Mm -hmm. Breach and but, another 30 meters, um, Chris, is, Chris has dedicated a, a significant portion of, of his smarts to <laughs> uh, figuring out how to average and find out where where Hercules is relative to. But again, the rest if you, of the if, world. you if you co-register it with uh, multi-beam, that comes out in the yeah. watch. Yeah. It, it's going to come out we'll right away. Nice. Yeah. Long story short, the uh, okay. multi-beam is registered to the Earth. And is properly scaled. So if we, uh, yep. so if we register yep. the SFM uh, model to that, so we should be able to away. constrain it. <laughs> yeah, and I'm I'm excited about that, Chris. Um, this is a, a cool question. If you could magically create any technology or tool to help you with this research, what would you create? I I, I would make the uh, ocean transparent. Yeah. <laughs> and. Uh, that would solve a lot of our problems. <laughs> it, 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 no, if it, it, you know, to to be able to do what we can do, think about the way we image the Earth from space. It's remarkable, mm -hmm. and there's water. It's in the way from. <laughs> <laughs> and if we if we had a, a a magic way to allow us to do that kind of imaging, to, to use the, to have the resolution and the speed at which light travels through the air, if we can have that equivalent in the ocean, it would it would be a game changer for sure. This is Were it. you getting the corals in your model there, Jonathan? Huh? Is that what uh, I just saw? Yeah, yeah. You yeah, see some of the corals hanging out there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right there. Right, right, right. Aww, yeah, yeah. How yeah. cool. And uh, so the model, you see these little green dots are where the image created, identified, and used for that parallax function. Those are those nice high resolution points. So if you'll look right now in, in Hercules' views, he's kind of going over and up and through and around this coral. We should be able to make a very nice model of that coral. 
uh, once we process it, as long as he kind of peeks behind it. Great answer, <laughs> Larry. I was going to say unlimited budget. But. <laughs> Looks like it uh, forks. There's a fork in your future. Uh, Chris and Dan, what do you have for an ETA to the next waypoint? Uh, you know, that's kind of hard to say because. How far is it? It. Uh, we're only 600 meters away. So, but it so depends on you know how. Long, much time we want okay, to take that, that, climbing that, the rocks. That, that's still on the order of an hour, though, right? Uh, it's basically a thousand meters an hour at point three, so we're doing yeah, uh, yeah, ten yeah. meters a minute. Yeah, ten Ship meters should a minute. Should be doing uh, point three. Yep. Yeah. yeah so, so six hundred meter. We're six hundred meters away from. Yeah. Well, the target. yeah. Not going straight there, though. Yeah. Uh, you gotta, it doesn't get caught, it, there's hard stops, so. Is that right? 10 meters a minute, 1,000 meters an hour? That's not right. Hang on a second, I can. We it's are an hour, yeah, it's an hour away. We're yeah. doing, it's point three five nautical miles and we're going to in 0.3 knots so we're if we, out, uh, if we we're continue to do this realistically it's going to be more right because we're zigging and zagging yeah zigging and zagging and pausing and zooming and whatever oh zooming yeah there's not you're right there's not a whole lot of zooming going on <laughs> and keep the boat bridge moving. nav yeah, uh, there you go. five zero meters one nine zero Well, yeah, I guess you're going to start climbing up, right? Because we lost the cliff. Or you can you? All right, we're just popping up to peek, yeah. have a peek what's up there. Because it yeah. looks like it does a weird fork thing there, but I, I couldn't really see okay. what it's doing. I don't know I how gotcha. to get there. <clears throat> but it looks like it might. Yeah? Yeah, that's fine. So currently right now we're figuring out what we're going to be doing next. Um, whether we're going to go to another site or recover. We're figuring out how long it's going to take to get there. All of that stuff. So we have a question. Will this movie be as big as the Eras movie? Well, that's the Eras movie. You're, are okay. you not on SP? Uh, uh, I, sh I figured SPL? out. Yeah. It's going to be bigger than the Eras movie.
sorry, Chris. So, Jonathan, uh, we got a question about uh, displaying Chris, this the imaging slurry? In a, on a dome. Is that, uh, are there plans for that? You know, like those? Uh, I'm at uh, uh, Sci Right, yeah. Yeah. Um, Bob's dome wondering if you could totally uh, actually yeah. are you, are you measure the no, depth no, no. at yep. the breakpoint of yeah, the. Dome, dome projections. Absolutely, something we're looking into of, of the flat of and the Again, base that, of the columnar joint from from the Norbit. That would be that. Well, I guess the Norbit's only giving you relative range, it's not an absolute it, depth. It would be or, or just, it, it is to, it, you to produce that kind of media. Yeah. You can pick it. Yeah. So, so if you just had, you know, in in that breakpoint, that. No. Yep. What's that? Yeah, mm -hmm. Rich. Just the depth of it. Getting yeah. over the yeah, right there. cliff a little bit there. So he's, he's picking the depth off now. Yeah. yeah. Could we uh, use this technology for there so um, it might for counting populations of things, corals, etc. So I am aware of people that are really looking yeah. deeply at how to auto-classify, so like use AI to identify what corals are, are in a 3D model, but that's not really my ex area of expertise. But Larry, Larry, you have some crew in your uh, uh, advanced visualization lab at UNH that are, are looking at, the question we was identification this, uh, up, and categorization yeah, of Yeah, lots, lots of people doing machine learning approaches to identifying automatically species and then leading that to counts. Yeah, so that's a, that's a really growing field. The key is, is really having the, what they call the training set. It, it doesn't come quickly. It's not magical at all. You need to train the, the software to find certain things. And the better and larger that training set is, the better the, better the automatic identification is. Seventeen thirty, thank you. Mm. Yeah, as you come closer, yeah. I'm gonna wait for you here. Aha. One more data? Yeah, I just added another thousand images to it. This is only out of the one camera. Okay. Port side. Port yeah. Side. Is, the, is the other one so foggy? The right hand side is having some sort of lens problem. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the cinema camera is working great though. All right. Two so out of three. One on top. One on top. Yeah. Doing the top down that'll, view. That'll give you a nice. Really that's nice. Fine. Yeah. All this verticality on the top. Whoops. Shouldn't touch it. Uh, that's good on the up for now. <laughs> I'll wait till the. Do you want to? Uh... Yes, please. Accessing all the data off the NAS right now, so it's a little slower than you want. Yeah. We live in all SSD world now. <laughs> but it's pretty good, pretty good. Oh, got yeah. Yeah. So for those of you just joining us, we are looking at uh, okay, thanks, at, uh, uh, Columbia understood. Basalt, looking at it and for it, and mapping it to create these awesome yeah. images that Jonathan's putting together. So basalt is an igneous rock that, because of uh, the way it cools, 
it creates these columns, that these hexagonal columns. <laughs> what is the Eris movie? D Jonathan. What? Ta Taylor Swift. <laughs> there. <laughs> so yeah, and you know what? I'm very suspicious. This is Jack from Carbondale, Illinois. And my sister teaches at Southern Illinois University, which is real close to Carbondale. I think there might be a branch of Southern Illinois uh, so what, University what is, in Carbondale. What is the question? What is Eris is, movie? So will this movie be as big as the Eras movie? I'm guessing nobody here has seen the Eras movie. I have not. No. <laughs> I'll say just as big, as bigger. <laughs> I'm going with Jonathan's it's answer. Risk. Eris? I don't know. I think it's a Taylor Swift thing. I'm not it's a sure. Taylor's, yeah, the Taylor Swift movie. movie? No. You guys didn't go to the Eras tour? <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Who, who did you, did you see the, the Eras movie, Vanille? You I haven't seen the Eras movie, but I mean, I of course heard about it. Yeah. <laughs> what is this oh. but, Well, I mean, the Taylor Swift Eras. Uh, they yeah. like made a movie of her concert. Yeah, so this summer the, was her Eras tour. Beyonce had the Renaissance tour, and now they're both having movies come out this year. Well, so it, it is, are you living under a basalt rock? It is. <laughs> it is a fine. Oh, we're our, it is. It is lore. It is novelist lore. This, uh, uh, the, uh, so one of our most popular ever videos is of a uh, what we call the googly-eyed stubby mm -hmm. squid. Yeah. Okay, everyone, if you're listening right now, well, if you're listening now, you know exactly what I'm talking about because you're a Nautilus fan. The googly-eyed stubby squid. If you Google right now googly-eyed stubby squid Taylor Swift, you will see Taylor Swift in a commercial looking at our googly-eyed stubby squid. Oh, when Taylor Swift way. looked at her phone and, and saw this video, our, our, our YouTube truly took off. So we thank all the Taylor Swift fans in the world. No Nautilus. And we, we, yeah. we invite everyone to join us on this deep sea journey. And if Taylor Swift would ever like to come out to the East <laughs> Nautilus with her, that, with her husband, if we, are, we are absolutely uh, here, 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 to, here to serve. We've got to get Beyonce right, right. next. Yeah. Beyonce's next. I, I co-sign that. Beyonce. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're going, we're going down Beyonce, there. if you're listening. Yeah. <laughs> we'll take Beyonce. <laughs> I think it would just be so awesome if Taylor Swift did come out. And I mean, talk about the, the, capa the capacity to engage her audience yeah. in deep sea exploration. <laughs> yep. Let's get the Swifties and the beehives. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there it is. I remember if you listen to the live video. Right, so we Dr. should put Larry, that up on the quad. <laughs> Dr. Larry Mayer, the... Uh, Director of the Center for Coastal Ocean Mapping is Googling Taylor Swift, googly eyed squid. As we uh, speak. At, at, at least I know who Taylor Swift is. <laughs> oh, I, that's I, okay. I, I, <laughs> oh, look, there's a Reddit r slash Taylor Swift, googly eyed stubby squid video. See, oh, this my is gosh. Good. Loves it. <laughs> gonna come back to, I'm going to so come back. So, for all the Swifties out there. Actually, yeah. probably, probably about a year ago, I wouldn't have known who Taylor Swift was. If it wasn't for all this stuff about uh, the, 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 her impact on economies of, of uh, oh. I, I wouldn't oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, You can just look down a little, you don't have to come down. Yes, please. I miss that. Um, look to your left a little for me. So I'm assuming like the more images you're putting in, right, the longer it takes to process it. And yeah. uh, you can yep. come That's up totally there correct. with me. It's a good problem to have. Yeah. <laughs> Two years later. <laughs> Two years later. <laughs>
Okay, I'm gonna zoom out this way so you can look to your left a little more. I'm gonna get this other wall here. Yeah. Make it look to your left a little more. And you'll see a big giant wall. But these are kind of interesting too. And that's good on the up. Yeah, you can see some layers within these yeah. as yeah, well. So, so you know, for the, all the columnar basalts I've seen in the field, I've never seen this kind of layering, this this horizontal layering. And, uh, what would cause that? Well, again, uh, um, it may be a, a cooling phenomena. It might be that originally, this. Yeah. Yeah, I mean this this looks like a bunch of little Oh, that's a yeah. hi that's a highlight yes. moment. Highlight. Yeah. Highlight, highlight. Th thank you, Dan. I, I I can eat my dinner now tonight. So they weren't they weren't going to let me have dinner unless we found something nice, but <laughs> What's that? Yeah, this is really cool. It's like it's like a bunch of pizza boxes, kind of all all kind of oh, yeah, stacked that's, up. Oh yeah, that is themselves. really cool. This is, yeah. Now good. people much more familiar with columnar basalts may say this is common, but I I've just not seen it like this before. I'm writing in the in the description basalt oh, yeah. as yeah. pizza boxes. Pizza boxes. It's yeah. incredible. Hexagonal yeah. pizza boxes. Absolutely. Very awesome. scientific observation, and yeah. I wrote the same thing. Oh. <laughs> 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 Go team. Is the um, cinema cam still online, Jonathan? Yeah, oh, let me, uh, at, yeah. sorry about that, here we go. Yeah, I wonder if you can, can you get up a little higher and take a, take a look at that kind of more top-down view? We, yeah, we're trying yeah. to do that now. Yeah, that, that, that's really spectacular. Uh, yeah. But that's a nice uh, oh boy. Atlanta view there. Yeah, come Absolutely. on. Absolutely. We get some Incredible. captures here going, yeah. That's, yeah. I highlighted the uh, Herc view. Highlight. I, did you highlight the Atlanta? I d yeah, I did. I highlighted this one. Yeah, totally. This, and also the pizza boxes. Yeah. But I kind of want to highlight it again because it's really cool. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, you can't. Go you ahead. Can, no, no, can, no. Do don't, be, don't be keep, shy about keep that. Keep highlighting. Jacob just ignores things that go to No, seriously, this is, this is amazing. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity right now. I don't. I can't tell if you're being sarcastic. No, okay. no, no. <laughs> if, if, you see, if I'm it's talking about a sea cucumber, I'm definitely being sarcastic. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just want everybody to know that Jonathan scared us when we did our training. <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, we better not be getting him out of bed for, you know, a sea, sea cucumber, cucumber, no matter how cute it is. I'm going to hang out here no until you get up over yeah. this stand. Yeah, please. That would be a great idea since we're <laughs> 10 meters away from it. <laughs> yeah. Is the uh, starboard camera on Triclops working now, or is it just able to... It's working. Like, is it, oh, okay, is it recording too? Yeah, we're recording all three cameras. Perfect. I mean, we're we should be going along this edge, right but yeah. Side. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Not into it, but very still close. close. Come up, uh, you're going to have to come up a little bit more than until there's hitting the uh, vehicle there. I'll uh, slow down. I think, uh, yeah, uh, watch, you're, watch you're the at the top there, now. Captain. There. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, you're good there. You're good there. I'll uh, I'll back away and drop back down. You can look down. I'll I'll come down and pull the tether off you. You look uh, straight down. Um, Larry, this is kind of what you were talking about before. Somebody's asking, is the new camera you are testing based on lidar? Do you want to talk about that again? No, li LiDAR is a, a laser that goes out, and the, what you do is measure the, it's just like a sonar. You measure how long it takes for the light to go out, hit something, and come back. And so that's li LiDAR, which is, means light, direction, and ranging, or something like that. Um, the camera itself is capturing, and Jonathan, excuse my better, is just capturing 
um, the optical reflectance, right. really, reflectance, yeah. of, of the surface. Um, and so the camera doesn't really know the range to the Ridge features. Ridge nav, one five meters, And that's why it's more difficult to get an absolute position of it. One five meters, two seven zero. And we could, we could theoretically calculate distance very, very well, well but because this is hmm? a stereo oh, pair, yeah. I'm just right. backing up a little bit. We know bit. Right. the distance I'm between not, yeah. the two lenses. And right. so you see the top of this thing. The, and so the you, geometry you'll get a very those. accurate yeah, we can go south description of relative heights on the we, surface. Yeah. But how far they are we from are, the vehicle. Th that'll just bring us along the slope. At this point. Oh, you want to stand off and then go. And there are tricks. Yeah, that, uh, I'll get a little bit off be done before to try I to figure that out, make any other as moves. You change distances, you'll have. I'll uh, yeah. I'm go south to get out. Or perspective from changes you. that. Well, for all of our viewers, this is why you should pay attention in physics class. <laughs> We tell you how much in demand right now uh, optical physicists are for. You can imagine this. These are very large cameras, and we're going through all of these challenges on how to optimize image quality. But but uh, folks at Apple and the Googles of the world and machine vision people are, are some di generating some truly incredible optics that are starting to rival what the used to be tens of thousands of dollars of very large and heavy hardware that are all in the, in our phones now. Yeah, yeah, yeah right there in your phone. I mean, you showed me, what was it, two years ago or three years ago, you, you had on your phone the ability to put oh together... Yeah, the lighter. The, yeah. It was with a lighter and to walk around and put together, create a three-dimensional three, three, three dimensional mm -hmm. model. The, the future is now. They're doing that now with ROVs in the commercial world. They're no longer using the uh, metrology. There's a company in the Gulf there that's using LiDAR to uh, do survey work. Beautiful columns. I like how the, the little pebbles fall on top of the column. So somebody earlier was asking if there if that was pillow lava at the top of these formations. And I didn't really see it back then, yeah, but I then have, just a little while ago it kinda did look I like mean, it. It. it would it would not be surprising that there are pillow lavas mm. associated somewhere with it with this. So that, you know, this obviously cooled different than a pill a pillow lava forms when come it comes out into the water. You step away. And you get that crust that makes it the pillow shape. But you know these are all remnants of a of an eruption of some sort. So most of the lava around here, I suspect, is well. I shouldn't say most, but much of the lava around here will be pillow pillow lavas too. I could use a pillow about now. <laughs> <laughs> Were you on the last watch also? I, I'm on all the watches. You're it's on, too yeah, exciting that's to leave. Wondering. This is what. This is what. This we're is here why for. you don't have time for Taylor Swift. This is. <laughs> this is. You know, like you don't. You don't all have right, time to be a Swift team. Keep stepping south this a bit. This, <laughs> yep. This is the culmination of like a year-long development <laughs> project. Three zero meters. I'm not leaving one one every. Nine zero. <laughs> but, but if Taylor Swift came outside, I suspect he'd oh, go. Oh yeah, yeah. I'd invite. <laughs> I'd, I'd, in, I'd invite her in. Join the show. This is. Uh, very possibly what I didn't look at any of the uh, details, but is this well, this is this is exactly the right depth. Yeah. Yeah. So I think this this very well may be what where, where they uh, where they found. So, Dan, I'm not sure if you feel oriented enough with uh, the the Norbit scan, but I'd love to start kind of a more formal transect now that we've kind of been be booping along. Um, and I, I'll defer to you and, and K2 as far as what that transect is, but kind of the same thing, just uh, icing, icing the cake of this wall, uh, maybe looking for the top of it and the bottom of it. Yeah, we are uh, at the top of it right here, and uh, it's, I don't know, 20 meters down there. Let me back right. off a bit, see if we can get a... Uh, so perhaps uh, from the top, maybe we can kind of ride the edge looking down with the cinema cam and, and get the edge view and then start lateraling back and forth in a zigzag fashion all the way down. It's like 30 yeah. meters down there? Yeah. Or, well, or then meters. it just drops off and we get no data. Well, 30 meters is a good length for a column. Is that? Yeah, I, I think that, that's kind of the... The normal large size of them. Yeah. Um, but you think of something like uh, the Devil's uh, right, 
So are we going to put one here those, then? Or? Uh, those, that's it keeps several hundred meters. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's all right. That's I think many there. of them are saying as long as you can. me an idea, 10 meters. Yeah. What's our standoff no. distance now? Hercules is five meters from the wall, and uh, Atlantis uh, up above it should more 10 meters according to nav behind us. So. So, I guess within the limits of the tether, do you think we can just kind of do the sweeps back and forth on, from the top of the wall down? Yeah. All right, I'm going to hold us here. Got it. Bridge nav, hold position. And everybody um, knows that we have a 3:30 pop-up time. Yep. Yes. What time is it now? Uh, you want to bring 12. your head uh, to the left a bit, so basically square up in your sonar there. So you got to come well, off like 45 degrees. I guess before executing degrees. this, Larry, do you think it's worth more collecting this data or continuing to explore to visually see what else is around before committing our last hour to this? I, I'd say for demonstrative data, that was a good chunk that we can chew on already. So I, I think getting, you know, I'm, I'm going to take Bob's view yeah. that. You know, we, we want every we treat every dive as the last. Come yep. up a bit. And in that case, we should put another good yep. data set in the can. Okay. Um, and and I and this looks like a quite a a nice spot. So. Okay. So. Does it matter if we go up and down or left and right? Uh, nope, doesn't matter. Um, I would do also what's optimal for. Norbit as well, just to add that as an additional transect, like you did before, where you stood off the wall. So I'll leave it yeah, up to you if we'll you want to do that. We'll have to stand off to do that, but if you want to do the photogrammetry first, we're kind of set up for that. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, I'm emerging. Yeah, I, th I think if you're set up to do the photogrammetry, do that. Yeah, first. Pho photogrammetry is first. I'd, I'd appreciate. You, then we can get that in the can. Uh, yep. Let me just verify yeah. that we're doing a thing. Yeah. You have to play with it till you get it, but. Um, are you ready to rock and roll, Jonathan? Yep. Take okay. the pictures. Here we go. I'm going to also zoom in here a bit so I can yep. get the snail trails so I know where I am. Yeah, but I'm going to. Is this a tippy top? Yeah, I'm just going to kind of use the nav screen and try and go down, uh, move over some amount of meters, come up. Okay. Yeah, this one. So you know, this site probably may not work so well for Norbit because we're not getting uh, bottom lock. Bottom lock. Not yet, but maybe we get uh, down to the bottom. You. <laughs> yeah. Well, if we, if we step off, we might get yeah. better. You have to we bring your head to the left now to find me. So I, I can't tell from the high pack, uh, but is, is this close to the waypoint? I, I see. A, I see. A yeah, I think I have the waypoint selected in there. One second. Yeah. Let me. Yeah, I, I, th I thought so, and it looks like we're quite close to it, which is kind of yeah, very five hundred meters. Yeah. Dan, I think because of this uh, marine snow in the water, right here. more backscatter at this location. Maybe uh, let's do a four or a three meter standoff, even. Uh, closer. Maybe four. Is what you're saying? Just a little bit. Just a oh, little yeah. bit. I can go as close as you want. Uh, no, if too I'm close. hitting them too close. Yeah. Uh, you'll have to come down. While we're tugging. Yep. Tugging is good for parallax. Ooh, look at that. Isn't that something? Pizza yeah. boxes, right? Mm -hmm. Man. Uh, that is a bathopathies, black a coral. A bathopathies? Yeah, it looks like a, a feather. Um, yes. And if you zoomed in, the coral skeleton Whoa. would be black. And then uh, that's some type of a stalk sponge. I'm not too sure which type. I'd have to get a closer look. Have we found the bottom yet of this? Wow. This is so amazing. I'm lighting up something at 20 some meters, oh. but are we getting beams? I don't know. Beams or I beams? I didn't uh, look at the depth at the top there. Okay, you'll have that to is chase so me down. Cool. Hold about yeah, 20 meter awesome. delta on the way down. Going down? Going down. Look at how this single column is just all the yeah. way. Yeah. I think I see the bottom on the yeah. uh, well, sediment cam. Maybe. Oh, yeah, that does look like the bottom. It looks like the bottom. Well, no, it's just sediment on top of another column, maybe? I don't maybe. Know. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Whoa, we no, I keep going a little. There. There's yeah, the there's the bottom. For those of you just joining us, we're looking at
uh, columnar basalt <laughs> on north of Molokai Island. Okay, I'm going to move to the right, Jonathan. Yes, tell me how sir. far to move. Let's. Yep, I'm looking at a feature. Go ahead. Roger. Okay, so we're at just scanning that right now. About 1670. What's your altimeter say? Point two. <laughs> Point two. It's uh, bouncing between that and 65. It was a rather steep hill we came up to find this. Yep. That's oh, pretty good right there, son. Okay. Thank you, Dan. I'm just trying to get, figure out what the, depth, the depth of the bottom is. Yeah, so we're, uh, we'll are we call that 1670, just because I can't remember those details. Okay, well, we're, yeah, all right. Six, yeah, 1671. You'll have to uh, come up with me now. So the third screen there uh, on the quad uh, is if you can, uh, uh, the Triclops the camera that we're using to scan to make uh, basically 3D images mm -hmm. that can eventually be turned into virtual reality. Yep. So can everybody can kind of swim around themselves um, and explore the deep ocean. Yeah, I'll try and keep it in view as I come up and down. Ooh, Jonathan's got more renderings for us. Yeah, that was pretty Very cool. That was when pretty. we traversed from oh, oh. one location to another. Mm -hmm. Just running in the background. So you'll see what we did see and what we did not see in a in a view like this mm -hmm. where we're actually able to oh let me turn off the point. Yeah, never mind. But this is us traversing along you, uh, looking at can that. Can you zoom in a bit more there, Chris? Looking yes. down at that, is that yep. what that was? Cool. Um, at your current location, have the humpback right whales there, begun to so return to up. that area yet? I think it's too early for humpbacks, yeah, right? We mm -hmm. certainly haven't seen any. Uh, yeah, we haven't seen any uh, humpback whales. Or any Do whales. we know how many viewers are, are uh, experiencing this with us right now? Um, yeah, this is pretty historic and amazing to be a part of this team. And uh, I'm a little curious to see how many... So people are viewing. I know that they are collecting that data, but I don't. Oh, okay. Yeah, we can figure that out. Yeah. You can look on the SCF page. It should tell you. The same one where you get who's on in what country and all that. Okay, that's that the top now? Pretty much, yeah. 20 meters. Go ahead, Bridge. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm traverse to the right again. Roger, I'm ahead. looking at that little whip coral. Yeah. It's kind of the frame of reference, so maybe when that's kind of at the one third to the left, we can go back down. Roger. To the port. Something like that? Yep. Okay, headed down. Third floor. Here we go, right down again. Pillow of assaults. Yeah. I'm gonna go a little faster. Very now, cool. So Please go as fast as you can. <laughs> Without <laughs> stirring up the visibility. <laughs> if I go fast, when we come on the next pass, there'll be a giant dust spot. All right. Very cool columns. It's very cool columns. Are you into geology, Jonathan? I'm into anything that looks amazing. <laughs> and in this case, I'm currently really into geology, yes. <laughs> so Herc went from the bottom to the top of that. To, and we get an idea how tall those columns are, and they're about 80 feet tall. So. Wow. Wow. Okay, moving right. Sir, moving right. So you're, you're doing the layer cake in the other direction this time. Yep. Yeah, it's easier to uh, watch the a, nav a screen vertical, and, a vertical layer cake and go up and yeah. up and down. Go up and down, and we'll be less likely to stir up the visibility on the wall. We can go faster up and down, I think, than we can. Uh, plus, it keeps Ray really busy. I'll take <laughs> all the speed you can give us. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we're going to go up and down, up and down. 
until everyone gets tired of it. That's good practice, huh? Practice makes perfect. Whoa. Speeding up the data collection here. So that's only 60%. <laughs> I could, I might be able to turn it up. See, we'll try 80, see if it stirs it up. I, I just don't want to ruin the shot halfway through. Okay, moving right. Ship is moving a little more again. That should be good, eh? Yep. Head it down, 80%. Power. Going down. Full beans. Might have to get uh, 20 south there, I think, Chris. And I don't know how far you yeah. want to do this. We've done about, what, 20 meters so far, or 10 meters? Rage nav, two zero meters. Um, I'll, I'll have the stamina to do this as long as our Watch leader says it's okay too. <laughs> well, we we have an hour. Yeah. I would love if uh, I'm sure that other people have done this at other columnar formations around the world, and it would be just so amazing to be able to compare these models. Well, across, I, I can't across imagine the globe. anybody's done it underwater. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, maybe, I don't know. Never want to say we're doing it for the first time. Yeah. 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 I think it's getting a little shallower over here because 1660 oh. there. So it's, uh, the feature is not as tall to the right here. Oh, cool. That'll be, that'll be interesting. Well, but yep, we started, the, but we started this one at 1644. So. So it's 20 meters, still 20 meters. There's a, something sitting on the ledge right there. On the ledge? Yeah, on the ledge, something was sitting on oh. it. You're gonna get that. <laughs> That's the uh, top of them there, I think. Can you bump forward just a little bit? Yeah, sorry. There's oh. a column on its side there. Yeah, it's kind of interesting the how the geology has changed. It looks like the outside of a big pillow. Yeah. Coming down. Coming down. Coming in a little closer. So, uh, Larry, what are some of the observations that were made back in the day? Well, I can read it. Yeah, yeah can it's you? It's kind of interesting. So, this was uh, written by the pilot, T. Kirby. And with him was an observer who, uh, Robin Holcomb from the USGS. So, I, I, I ran into occasionally. And this was from September 5th, 1996. And uh, they started the dive, oh, it's a long dive, 8.22 in the morning and came back at 4.40 p.m. So that's, that's a long time in a little submersible. They landed on a steep silt at sand bottom at 1,958 meters, and then we started quite deep at that. And then they saw some basalt outcrops. They moved down a steep, silty slope to 1,963 meters. They collected a sample from a basalt outcrop at 1954, moved southeast towards the east wall of a canyon. Collected sample two from a thick basalt flow at 1820, and we've seen some of those flows. Actually, that's what you're looking at now is a thick basalt flow. 
Um, moved up the wall, collected some more samples from a band, a Columna Basalt, at 1813, and we've seen that band interspersed with flows. They moved upslope, collected another sample from a basalt agglomerate wall, continued up the slope, collected another sample from band of carbonate material at 1,727 meters, and I don't think we've seen much of that here. Collected a sediment clod, that's a good scientific word, at 1,697 meters. And then they said they located a large field of basalt columns at 1,860 meters on a steep slope. Moved south along the wall, moved back up to the east, up the wall, and uh, stopped at 1,574. They collected a, another sample from a hard sediment outcrop at 1,518, which was the top of the ridge. Then they continued south along the slope and collected some broken salt and clay rubble. And 1430, they left the bottom. So that's the entire description yeah, of, a, wow. of their so dive. The, it's like crazy to think that the last people that saw these rocks there. were okay. we in a submersible. I wonder what submersible it was. It was a Pisces. Out? I think um, we're and actually, um, if, out of well, you, I don't know what okay. day you arrived, but the Pisces still sits in the, at the Hawaii Marine Facility. Oh, it's, nice. it's in one of the hangars there. Is that is that a chonicops? Okay, Taylor and what do we got there? I think this okay. might be the goosefish again. Video, you still awake Lofidae over there? Saldina Rimiger. Yeah, zoom in on uh, the on the so fish. So not a chonicops. That's it. That's the end of the um, photogrammetry of the fish. Is this ruined it? Only fish. <laughs> the fish. Well, no, we'll, we'll get a Not nice, we'll get, as long as it doesn't move. It oh, doesn't as long as it doesn't move, okay. He looks pretty content Every, right there. Everybody quiet. We don't want to wake <laughs> it. Please, please, slowly, for maximum photogrammetry, <laughs> just slowly arc around this fish. I am slowly arcing around this fish. So although we are laughing, we do have the ability in this final photogrammetry model to insert this ultra, ultra high resolution 3D model of a goosefish, which I'm sure will be the feature of this entire as long, model. As long as it doesn't move. As long yeah. as it's not a sea cucumber, I'm happy. Well, it, mark right. this highlight as a five. Well, <laughs> don't tempt me. <laughs> yeah. He is so cute, look at he him. He is, right, yeah. like, a real, is that a five in Jonathan's okay, book? Right. I think it's a, a monkfish. <laughs> monkfish? Let's see. Let me keep looking up. It might be the goosefish, but I want to just make sure. This may be the first goosefish that has ever been recorded in a combined 12K of resolution. <laughs> Just Way to go, goosefish. With, with three cameras. Follow your dreams. Four, 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 more, cameras. More, four yeah. cameras. Maybe five if Dan can see this and it's down cam. All to catch that fantastic pouty face. I am a pout pout fish with a pout pout face. <laughs> and I spread my dreary wearies all over the place. I don't know. He looks really happy to me. Dad, dads and moms know exactly the book I'm talking about right now. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, look at him. Can, can we zoom in more, please? That, <laughs> look at his face. He's wondering what we're doing right Actually, now. Actually, what's that do when you zoom? Huh? Uh, I don't have zoom. No, no, no. Oh, the, oh, oh, your, no ca it, your cameras don't it zoom. It messes yeah. quite up. It messes yeah, everything yeah, up, yeah. but it's not bad. <laughs> but we're <laughs> willing to live with that. Oh, it looks yeah. like his eyes are following you there. They, they definitely As are. long as Dan doesn't uh, smash the port side or the starboard side bottle there. Is it a goosefish, do you think, Taylor? Tell me when the so uh, starboard side bottle I'm seeing it is a out. Saladina remiger, which is a celibus monkfish. Monkfish. Is that all the zoom? Large, part? pale, grayish. No. Yeah, so it is a goosefish. So it's just oh, another yeah. name is the monkfish. Um, yeah. So it's a cute goosefish. Oh. I want to see if the RV goes to the other side, his eyeballs rotate to the it's other gonna side. It's going to be, uh, we get his eyeballs it, in full 3D. <laughs> If anyone's listening on the internet, we will make a special effort to create a three-dimensional image yes. of a monkfish on columnar basalt here. <laughs> Dive H2012. <clears throat> South of Molokai. That monkfish is a mood, though. Look at him. <laughs> he could move, but... Why? I like how he's kind of like sitting sideways. He's like, this is where I want to be. 
Yeah, it doesn't look like an ideal position. Yeah. But he looks comfortable. <laughs> or they look comfortable. So maybe, Larry, maybe, maybe he's getting a little wash out of the you know out of, out of the flow <laughs> coming out of that little hole there. Traditionally, this is where I look to the watch leader to say, "Go away from the monkfish." Yeah, you can go away from the monkfish. <laughs> I was just <laughs> going to say, uh, otherwise Dan will just let it I stay thought Dan, here. I thought Dan was going to do it on he's his own. He's just getting close. Uh, no, Dan will never do it. He's, <laughs> he's testing his piloting skills, seeing how close he can get with these cameras. All right, let's move on. Usually they say go away when I just finally get set up. Look at that color pop. Wow. Yeah. And you can see the oh, now I'm um, too close to lights appendage. It's an angler fish. You see that in the center of its where you think its nose would be, essentially. Too close. Too close. Oh, oh. The shadow's is that the is it. that what's there's something right that next to it that's moving. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> but but wait. <laughs> wait. Actually, Whoa. Look, look at that look at that fish eye. It's gonna get a really good one. Hmm. Oh no, it's not. All right. It's not fish. Okay. Roger. <laughs> He certainly behaved himself and stayed still. He did. Consequences of the uh, lens choice, so like, we actually don't have any. Oh, oh now he's from. moving. See? I'm oh, he's angry now. Oh. Yeah, yeah. There it is. Oh. So he's waving us by. Yeah. Okay, sorry, I should have warned your video. My bad. Uh, downlight's off. Uh, I think that's it. We're kind of, we've done, I don't know, 10, 20, 30, 40 meters of up and down. I'm kind of. Let's make it 100. Board with up and down. You want to keep moving south? It's um, up to you. I would like, uh, let's, can we do four more up and downs? Sure. And then. Uh, Bridge nav, another two zero meters. I would see, well, look at this. Look at how this uh, column here, look, it actually has a little nook and cranny behind it. That would be a fun thing to drop down into that little canyon. Once we get up. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's fifty five. Okay, moving right. <laughs> okay, I don't feel up. so bad about doing so many high lengths of the goosefish. Somebody wrote in, somewhere out there, someone studying goosefish is going to be super happy <laughs> that I got that third capture. All six people. We oh, are. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we are here to serve. Uh, now, now, now I'll get, I'll get angry yeah, mail get the from, angry from, from the Goosefish goose. Association. Uh, no. <laughs> that you will. <laughs> hey, uh, can you pause for a second? I'm going to make a camera adjustment. Pausing. Yeah, we just have the moment here not to rush, so. Um. Still adjusting, or are you good? Yeah, yeah, one second, please. I'm waiting Roger. for the uh, client to let go of the camera. Thank you. Okay. Do you want to see each side of this particular rock? Or yes, please. Let's do a little wishy-washy around this. Right. Here. Going down here. Is there anything about that adjustment you would like me to note take? Uh, yeah, sorry. I just took the cinema camera from F5.6 to F8. To improve the uh, sharpness of the edges.
There he is again. That's the marker, man. That's what we know where we are. He's a fiduciary oh. right there. Yeah. We call him a fiduciary fish. Oh, <laughs> if, we, if we had lasers, we'd know how light he was. <laughs> what? Um, I'm not sure. I think that, uh... What of is that working? One of the lasers... ...isn't currently functional. Mm -hmm. Reach nav, another two zero meters, one eight zero. They have a very, uh, finicky, very micro connector on so them, and the connector tends to... The uh, fact that we're not... Grief. ...orthogonal to it. Is there any issue that you image this way versus image that way? As long as it doesn't change. As long as the angle of the camera doesn't change, the parallax is well, able well to... Well, the camera angle, but the vehicle angle can. I see dust. Uh, you know, is it, dust you know, you no, have the vehicle's to guarantee perfectly flat. The vehicle will always be flat. This is... We're not using that cameras. Okay. Zeus is going up and down, left, yeah. right. Okay. Doing whatever it wants. It makes it difficult to use it. Okay. That's why even though this cinema camera is virtually identical, it'll provide more reliable results for this, this kind of exercise. And I know we were talking about the configuration of Norbit on uh, the vehicle. Um, where is it positioned on Hercules, and would it be possible to put it on, like make it tilt? Yeah, like that's provide a good question. A function? And, and, and yeah. the Norb you let, I'll let Chris answer. But yeah. yeah, so I, I don't know if the screen is going out, but yeah. the Norbit is right here so we have this coordinate frame here showing right where it is so it's right under the right just sort of above the cameras right on the very front of the vehicle on the front left side of the vehicle yep front left side and the reason we put it there the is because it can actually see up into the left that way so we can measure vertical structures which it's about time to do yeah and so it it can be oriented to look forward to it can and, and yeah for, but and for a wall like this that might be okay but it cuts out a lot of other real good possibilities yeah that's right so we often find that just like looking out to the left is better uh or just as good for most situations but sometimes we do orient it forward uh and we use that if we want to find things in the water column so when we're looking for like methane seeps or something like that we often point it forward and we can see the bubbles coming up from the seafloor in the uh, in the water column view that way. And is that something you have to take it off to reorient it, or does it, it automatically it tilt? It is, up? yeah. We tried, mo we tried motorizing it once. Um, Dan remembers that. It ended. Vividly. It, it ended in sadness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's unfortunate, but yeah, yeah, it, yeah but that well, would be that's how it goes. Yeah. You know. Okay, Sometimes you put things in the ocean and they get broke. So I'm going to zoom back up to the north here and get set up for a south run. So I'll do one run over the top here. Okay. Uh, are you for the with the Norbit? Yeah. Okay. Let me know when we're about to start. I'm going to start a new survey so I can find it. Roger. I am headed north now, right over the top. So. Okay. Okay. So you're done with. Yeah, your and I'd like to see if we can because right I'm now the DVL the is kind of okay, crap. If you so. Are. Yeah, it's fine with me. Uh, uh, if we can't call, get good DVL, um, it's kind of a waste of time. Guys, I'm going to stop right. image recording now. I think if, if we if we no, step there, right now, you can see we're kind of like on the edge. Line. I think if we step off, yeah, maybe we can get off. something a little uh, bit. Maybe Thank we you. can get something a little better. Okay, so now we're going to move move off the wall a little to optimize for the multi beam sonar, and so the imagery will will something fade like that, away. Chris. Uh, even a little further. Roger. So those of you just joining us, we are scanning. Yeah, because uh, you, you can see the, if you look at it from this view, you're right. You're like right here. Yeah, so really you want to be like over Way this. out there. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's going to, I think it gets rapidly deep out there. Yeah, but it's, yeah, but it's not a cliff. So I'm hoping oh, yeah. the DVL might work. Chris, what frequency are you operating at? Right now we're at 400 kilohertz. Okay. Uh, we can go up to six, but with this noisy vehicle, mm -hmm. it and this that kind of not being the frequency the head's tuned for, it it doesn't. Right. And it doesn't how, work how great. Can you go down to 200 too? We could go to 200, yeah. yeah. We could uh, when we come off bottom, maybe we'll give that a shot. See if yeah, we can see might, if we can see might, any it further. Might be, it might be interesting to get to get that overview. Yeah. 
I mean, right now we have no issues with range. Mm -hmm. I had uh, four beams there. Yeah, uh, do you? Sure. I had, it keeps going yeah. four, now it's two. Uh, my head, it, let me dial my heading in it. My head's dancing around. That's uh, 15 meters off from where we were. Okay. Three beams. So for those of you just joining us, we are um, three scanning beams. three, uh, making yeah, that's uh, probably 3D about rendering of do, right? these uh, so basalt formations. Yeah, step a few more meters off. Yeah. Uh, Let me, I can open this up a little wider too. Maybe we can get, yeah. <laughs> there you go. A viewer says, are you sure you're not playing Minecraft? <laughs> I am not sure. <laughs> I'm not it's sure a, either. It's, there's, uh, it's, I'm yeah. not playing though as a as an operator. That's Chris over there. Yeah, the technology <laughs> is basically the, uh, is actually exactly the same. Uh, the way they represent the maps in Minecraft is exactly the same as we represent the maps in here. Um, I can get a solid three beams. All right, that's that's what we got. Well, there it goes, Dan. Okay, ready? Uh, let me know. I am going to start a new survey. All right. Because we last one got pretty noisy with all the Doppler dropout. Right. Okay. Okay. Now we can go. Here we go. We're probably going to have to uh, step the ship, too. Okay, Raj. Uh, bridge nav, two zero meters due north. Can someone explain what the colors on this map mean? Uh, uh, the color? Oh, God. What? The pilot is Dan. You can come down uh, oh, uh, five meters. T Kirby. The colors represent depth. So the the brighter or the hotter the color, I guess, the reds are the shallowest depth, and into the oranges and the green, and finally the blues represent the deepest Pisces. Pisces 5. Someone from Kauai sends an aloha to us. Aloha. Aloha. Yes, well, thank Veronica. you very much. There we go. You got a leash? Yeah, we're here. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's really nice and clean, Chris. That's, that's, it is, that's yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. Um, the ship is fighting to move in that direction. The wind is really, or the conditions are starting to pick up. Yeah, I was a little worried that we wouldn't get such a good map because the DVL is not uh, is not doing so great, but it's doing well enough apparently. And I slid to the south a little there while I'm waiting. Say what? I slid backwards uh, a couple okay. meters. Yeah, up. that's fair. I see it. I have your trajectory in here. Is the arrows? Yeah, oh yeah, I forgot about that. Uh, yeah, it's yeah that can be. I turn it's useful when we're doing this kind of thing. Totally. See where you've been. Yeah. Bridge nav. Go ahead and put in another right. twenty meters. Let's try to keep the ship moving.
Okay, yeah, that's great. Thank you. Oh. Okay. Yeah, the ship's really struggling to go this way. That's uh, against the wind, is it? Yeah, well, no. we're split between the wind and the current, uh, so there's no good answer. The there's against. no good answer. Yeah. How much further do you have to go, Chris? Uh, as far as we can, as far as we can, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, well, there's no there's no sense going beyond where right. it's an image. Right. But, uh, That's fine. Uh, we've gone about 20 meters, so another 20 meters. Yeah. 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 It's going to be a very rectangular survey. Mm -hmm. Well, we can turn around and do the one to the south, and then... No, nah, it's okay. Yeah, I think one good, one, good, good. one good pass is all right. We're getting all this data down here, which doesn't do Jonathan any good, but might as well grab it. Might well, as well. Well, well, it's nice, because it'll be nice to see that context. I think, yeah, right. right. Yeah. Uh, I, I envision Jonathan's super high resolution texture mapped image. Absolutely. In, in yeah. this and yeah, larger really geospatial you, context. It yeah. really gives you sort of the scale, too. Yeah, exactly, yeah. I just love the visual right now showing how small Hercules is in relation yeah. to that. Yeah, it reminds you <laughs> yeah, of how far you can tiny. see with the sonars. Like, yeah. Uh, That's really cool. Yeah, we're getting some, let's we can zoom in on the cloud here. Yeah, and this cloud is colored by backscatter, the yellow cloud. But it's all the same substrate, so it's kind of showing up the same. Well, I'm waiting for that coral to show up. You know. Yeah. But I mean, you can, you can see as we look obliquely on this on the soft yeah, slope but, but and stuff, you can see some variation. But right, but ju just on the yeah. the hard basalt is just screaming back. Just on the morphology, uh, you can identify where the take columbus, your uh, columbus auto heading are. off. I mean, right. Yeah, take it off and just let it let it go tail to tail. Which would be an interesting thing if we get to if we get to McCall. Well, there are no Columbus basalts on McCall, but I mean th this should be a target for identifying them. Is I'm where you have the vertical. Telling slope. you now. I'll slow down. I'm, I'm going to keep the ship moving just so that Argus yeah. doesn't stop to swing. Yeah. Bridge nav, uh, put in another 20 meters. Just keep the move going. Can uh, come down five meters. I'll have to get Argus in this visualization too. <laughs> <laughs> you might. That would be hard, actually, because Argus is in Hawaii. Bri yeah, bridge. Let's go ahead and <laughs> add another 20 meters to the move. Yeah, well, I mean, it's not hard in computer land. <laughs> oh yeah, I can put whatever could. I can put whatever model I want in there. <laughs> From wherever. Yeah. <laughs> I could fill it with Arguses. That would be sweet. Yeah, this is coming out actually really pretty well. I'm I slid again. Although so. we are now, we lost DVL. So, hi, uh, Manel. It's a single pass, so it it's going to look good because there's going to be no overlap. But <laughs> <All right. laughs> that that's the key. Yeah. <laughs> but that's now you can. But that's you can, I keep wondering about what. But Jonathan you can look over doing. here. You see how there's like some jitters in there. Yeah, that's a DVL. You can see it's a little wavy in the wall now. There, Larry. That's yeah. Because yeah, yeah. we lost the DVL. Right. It's starting to. It's struggling. So I was just like wondering why Jonathan goes so many passes. I said, gee, you know, you, you yeah. everything well, fits you, when you have one now pass. You, now you got it back. All right, there we go. And I actually slid south for that, so I don't know why. I don't know. It's just, it's very, very steep. For yeah, it's pretty challenging. What's DVL? the DVL locking on? Uh, what's the DVL depth? Uh, 70, 70 meters? Yeah. Yeah, but 70 meters on one side, and it's probably like yeah, 15 on the other. Exactly. Yeah. So that's why we're only getting. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. And it's dropping out. I'll, I'll come down. Maybe yeah, that'll help. go ahead and try. That is such a cool view. Look at that. Uh, no, you're good. This is where that INS would come in handy with the intermittent locks like this? Yeah. 
That's down five meters, that's not helping. Nah, it didn't make any difference. We're running past the end of the feature here anyway, so. Okay. Yeah, this is definitely one of those maps you don't want to do multiple passes on. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it'll be in the right position and about the right scale. So yeah, if we're scaling yeah. Jonathan's model, it'll yeah, still no, work it, great, exactly, but it, yeah. it won't make a, as pretty of a picture. Yeah. There'll be a lot of noise in it. All right, so we have... Uh, That's what Blender's for. We have about 30 <laughs> minutes before we come up. We can either... Uh, okay. Come up early and just continue to follow the wall and, and find out that at 3.29, we're going to see the most spectacular. Yeah. All right. I'm going to go ahead and stop this Norbit survey. Roger. I'll take that. Turning my uh, heading, is that killing you? No, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, no, that's, that's fine. It, it gives me a little bit to constrain it by. I'm going to turn to the right and come yeah, down. Yeah, just do a three. Yeah, do your 360 and I'll, uh, I can filter this out later. Roger. But that'll give me a a couple points to get things lined up for. I can actually fly over it at that angle if you want it. we got about 30 minutes left right. of dive time. If mm -hmm. you guys have any more questions, please type them in to that white box underneath the view of the quad or really whatever you're viewing on nautiluslive.org. Or if you're watching us on YouTube, go over to nautiluslive.org and type a question in or comment. We are looking at basalt formations uh, to the north of Molokai Island. Sorry, south. Wait. All right, I am going to officially north. stop this survey. Okay. North of Molokai. All right. Sure. The, we need to change the dry erase board. That made me like, doubt yeah, myself. I, I crossed it out, but I didn't oh. rewrite the new name. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I always forget that the whiteboard is there because I sit right next to it. Because <laughs> I was like, yeah, we're north. And then I looked at it and I'm like, oh, wait. Oh, we, man. Yeah. Look, look, look at these things. They come in. Wow. Oh. Okay. You can, um, we're going to do some tether maintenance here. So okay. uh, why don't you uh, hold off on coming down and spin your head to the right uh, to a 360, if you can. Should be able to. They also look like poker chips, kind of stacked on top of each other. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's another path of path. You got to turn your auto head back on. Got some brisingids hanging underneath that ledge there. What are they called? Brisingids. Brisingids. A hungry brisingid. They're also looking a little spooky. Yeah, they look like they're giving us a stare down. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? This is a better picture of how they look here on my screen. Oh, boy. Yeah, hold, hold yeah. that. Oh, brisingid. See if it'll come around. turned your heading speed up so it comes around rapidly. That heading speed up and down if it's struggling. So. Okay, I should be should be able to look down a little and that should be me below you. So a creature like that, is that sedentary? Does it just stay there its entire life or does it move around? No, they can they can move. Uh, you know. But I think it's just able to that, feed right? better Our where it's positioned. Oh, I, should, I, yeah, I suspect they yeah, find a back good spot less than one. for flow or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, there's more but, availability know, of, yeah, food if, to, to catch there. If they had to climb up there, that was a long climb. Yeah. <laughs> take them several years. <laughs> yeah, I wonder how long it would take. So someone's asking about the ultimate purpose of this expedition. Other than trying out new cool toys, uh, are you working on, like, improved maps, surveying? Yeah, I think the answer is, yeah. is, is all of the above. Every time we go out and collect data like this, it improves our maps. But this really is a, an expedition that's focused very much on uh, testing some really advanced technologies that will hopefully uh, allow us to share these experiences um, and, and get a much better feel for 
the details of the terrain um, so that many more people than just those of us who come on board a ship like this can, can analyze and study the data. And, and it takes testing. It, th these are very, very complicated technologies and the ocean is a very harsh environment and you can't just sit in the lab and say, okay, we have something that's gonna work. It takes a lot of time and a lot of patience and, and we often uh, have to negotiate with the funding agencies who fund us, who you know, are always impatient to guess, see the great yeah. results. <laughs> that when you, you develop cutting edge and leading edge Bridge technologies, it takes time and you need to have time dedicated to these kinds of tests. And so unlike most of our expeditions, which, which go off into areas that are totally unexplored, this one is actually going to areas where we knew there was uh, difficult terrain. So these are areas that have been explored. We have this, in, in this case, the, the Pisces dives from 1996, and in each of the places we're gonna stop, we have some previous information. Um, because again, the, the key is to test these systems in, in very, very difficult terrain. So I guess the bottom line is I'm making no apology for this being <laughs> a, a technology test. Yeah. It's critical, really, to, to pushing the science. And it's enabling more discoveries in the future. Oh, absolutely, so absolutely. You gotta, you gotta, gotta have ba start with baby steps and mm -hmm. trying it out, testing it out, making it better, making it better. Well, I'll tell you, we, this is our first. We, we had the shakedown dive yesterday. This is our first kind of real dive, and it's not a baby step. This has been, <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this has been a leap, Jonathan. So, yeah. so thank you. Yeah, that's was that was really cool. The three D rendering. Somebody is asking about. I think the map that we had on previously. Mm -hmm. Uh, what am I looking at with the lines and the boxes in blue? Lines it's the deeper areas are the blue ones. Yeah, so yeah. so the, the the map that you saw being made, and that was being made in real time, is from something called a multi-beam sonar. It's a, an echo sounder. It sends out echoes and, and, and basically counts how long it takes for the echo to come back. And knowing how fast sound travels in water can calculate how far away it is or how deep it is. Um, this is a very fancy one that has hundreds of individual little beams that go out in a fan from, in this case, the its mounting place on Hercules. And each one of those dots represents, a, 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 as Chris explained before, a very downsampled version of all the returns coming back. And they're color-coded so we can judge what's shallow and deep very, very easily. And so the reds represent the shallowest points and the deep blues represent the deepest points. And Chris will take that data after, and he'll he'll go through another step of processing, and it will come out in a very smooth-looking picture yeah. of a three-dimensional map. Several steps, I believe. Oh no! No, he's, it's, he's, no, he's, no, it's so good. I have it all automated now, so it just oh, imports yeah. straight to Chimera. Really? Yeah. Wow. Isn't that great? Automation. This is where it's at. Yeah. <laughs> but then in no Chimera, chat GPT it, required. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it Chris is Chris is laughing because <laughs> he definitely I I will be the first to admit so I'm not a I'm not a coder by heart but the, how powerful it is to know how to script things in Python truly is uh, it's an invaluable skill and if you're a student out there wondering what what skill should I bring to any job coding um, is it can be a huge one in the sciences. Um, yeah, it's it's become so important that uh, as we each year except our incoming graduate students, and we accept five or six a year uh, into our ocean mapping program, certainly one of the highest criteria for selection is coding skills. Yep. But if we find uh, a, a very good student who lacks coding skills, we actually uh, send them the summer before yeah. to, to a, a coding, a series of coding classes so that they come 